Travis Monroe, owner of Monroe Pullman Photo. And today we're gonna to talk about camera settings and what we shoot, how we shoot for the wedding day. So up first, we shoot everything with our Sony A7S III, as well as an A7 IV that we have. So we're a Sony company, so these settings are primarily gonna be based on Sony, but certainly can be tailored to whatever camera system you're using for us. For our picture profiles with the Sony cameras, we prefer to shoot with the P11. If you are shooting with something like the Sony a7 III or older, then you can go ahead and shoot with the picture profile off. And if you're shooting with any other type of camera like a Canon uh, or even uh, the Panasonics, uh, feel free to reach out to us and ask what we prefer. A lot of times we will go with the standard picture profile within these cameras. When filming on the wedding day, we prefer to have our main camera uh, shoot with 4K 60 frames a second. That way when post hits, we can slow things down if we want to, but at the same time, uh, you know, have that flexibility throughout the entire day and not have to worry about switching all the time. So this camera, my main camera, will be at 60 frames a second all day long. If you don't have the ability to shoot at 4K 60 frames a second, feel free to shoot at 4K 30 frames a second. The main thing that we're looking for is just have the ability to slow it down a little bit to give our wedding videos a little bit of a dreamy feel to it. That's why we shoot slow motion on our main camera that we're gonna be cutting to. And all of our other cameras are gonna be focused on getting 24 frames a second. Mainly because shooting 60 frames a second on those cameras, we don't really tend to slow down that footage anyway. It just takes up way more memory card space. So shoot 24 on, on your other cameras, 60 on the main. Regarding autofocus, yes, autofocus is amazing and can certainly save your butt in a lot of situations. And we tend to shoot with the autofocus on throughout the entire wedding day on our main camera. However, during major events, we prefer to flip things over to a manual focus. And we'll go in more detail in this in other videos on how we can pick our focus. But the main reason why is because Autofocus will get messed up during ceremonies and other events where there's more people moving around and you wanna make sure that you're focused in one area. Otherwise, autofocus is great for the majority of the day. Working with your auto ISO setting. Now on the Sony cameras, I prefer to set my auto ISO so that it ranges all the way up to 32,000. Uh, what this does is it still gives me a nice clean image in most situations. Even at nighttime, I still get a pretty clean image. I leave the auto ISO on for most of the day. The trick though, is that A, with these picture profiles, you gotta underexpose it a little bit. So if you look at like your metering profile, it usually says negative 0.3 on it. So that's what I look for when I set up my auto ISO. And then also when you're shooting in front of windows, you really cannot trust the auto ISO. So there's gonna be situations such as if you're shooting indoors for a ceremony and you have windows all around you, you got to turn off the auto ISO then. It's just, you can't trust it. It's going to blow things out and you just need to manually dial it in. Otherwise, if you're just running around throughout the entire day, utilize that auto ISO. My main camera, this lens that I use, uh, it's the uh, Sony 24 to 105 G Master. It's a great lens, but it only goes to F4. And I really like that because then when I'm using the autofocus, I know 90% of the time my shots are gonna be in focus no matter what I'm doing. If I step down and put on a lens that was at a 2.8, then I tend to have shots that more get missed when I'm using the autofocus. That's why I do like to shoot F4 throughout most of the day and I try to keep it like that. During major events, I'll switch it down to about 5.6 because I'm doing that manual focus. But again, it kind of depends on the situation, what we're doing. Regarding the shutter speed then, since we shoot 60 frames a second, you should at least be shooting at 1 1 25th a second with your shutter speed. On your other cameras that are set to 24 frames a second, that should be 1 50th. And if you're shooting at 30 frames a second, it should be 1 60th. If you do not have a neutral density filter, that's the first thing is you should have a neutral density filter. But if you find yourself that you don't have one or maybe your ND filter still isn't doing it enough, then feel free to turn your ISO into manual mode that you can control it and crank that shutter speed. Or the other thing that I like to do is I'll crank my shutter speed until I see the ISO kicking in. Then I know, okay, 
If the ISO is just kicking in a little bit here, this is where I need to keep the shutter speed at. When it is a major event, such as a ceremony happening outdoors, you want to avoid cranking that shutter speed as much as you can. Uh, you still can crank it if you need to, if the ND filter and everything is just so bright out, certainly then that's what we're going to have to do. Uh, but then we just need to keep in mind of what we need to do in post-production to help make it look a little better. But if you didn't have an ND filter on and you just cranked it over, that's the worst kind of scenario to have for the major events during b-roll shots not as big of a deal but for major events we definitely want to have an nd filter on to try getting as clean of an image as possible regarding white balance throughout the wedding day never 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 shoot with auto white balance your camera will constantly be adjusting your white balance while you're even shooting so it doesn't necessarily lock it in and then when we go in post-production that leaves us a huge headache trying to fix it throughout the entire ceremony or major events, stuff like that. What you want to do is at the very least use your default white balance settings, such as like the sun picture and things like that, uh, depending on what your camera is set up to use. I certainly use it like that for 90% of the day. And really when I'm indoors and I have a lot of mixed lighting, I have like the incandescent lighting, but the daylight's coming in as well, that that's where I'll go in and to really dial it in uh to the white balance because typically then those presets there's nothing that you can really do about it throughout most of the day if i'm outside i'm gonna set it to daylight or if it's cloudy day set it to cloudy day and not change it until i absolutely have to because if you're outside it can fluctuate a little bit but that preset is going to work great whereas if i go indoors then i'm going to be a little more picky trying to change it because you're going to have scenarios where you're going to have some daylight you're going to have some incandescent lighting different things like that where you're just going to have to crank it more and, and change it around based on where you're at per each room there you have it. That's the basics for what we use throughout the wedding day for our camera settings. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out and stay tuned for the next video.